Today on Ag Etc., we're starting with Justine Statton with Kansas Horse Council as she makes a final push for 2018 Equifest. Next, Grant Morgan with Pokey Feeders gives us a tour of their facility and we get to see firsthand who's implementing good water management on their feed yard. Then Eric A.D. with the Kansas River Valley Experiment Station talks about the result from a corn fungicide trial. And we end with cattleman Jim Moore talking about, you guessed it, beef. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hi there, I'm Justine Staten, Executive Director of the Kansas Horse Council, and we are excited to bring you Equifest of Kansas 2018. It's our 21st year of this event, and every year gets bigger and better. Top clinicians would include Bobby Kerr. He is a master Mustang makeover person, and he actually has brought his Mustangs that he trained up, and they are part of his entertainment act. And so he's really going to be demonstrating skills at the gentling process, I believe. He's also going to be using them in his entertainment act at halftime at the Ranch Rodeo, something that you don't want to miss because it's quite entertaining. Brad Lund will be working on fence work and box work and cattle sorting skills. Paul Humphrey will be utilizing his uh, breaking the mold philosophy. He incorporates horsemanship and reining background, taking the body mechanics used in those sports and moving them into the barrel racing to enhance the results. Lynn Ringrose Moe, Mette Rosencrantz, Larry Weitzel, and we're excited to bring you Dave Showtime Meyer. He's a YouTube personality. He'll be a ton of fun to entertain everyone with. Vendors. Over 150, we take over all of the Kansas Expo Center as well as the Capitol Plaza Hotel, and there's something at every end of it you don't want to miss out. This isn't just for people that ride. This is for anybody that loves to watch a horse, that wants to see horses. Maybe you've never been around horses and you want to learn about them. This is a great opportunity to come out. We also have educational workshops. Great opportunity to learn more if you're a first-time horse owner or a seasoned horse owner and you want to tweak something that you've got a problem with or a question on. You are going to meet some of the best clinicians right here. Some of the best workshop presenters right here. This is the place to be to get all your questions answered one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with the experts. There's no better place and it's really inexpensive when you think about it. A $20 wristband gets you to all activities each day or 45 gets you all three days. And this is nonstop from 8, 8.30 in the morning until after seven at night or we have evening entertainment, ranch rodeo, Friday and Saturday night, jumper classic at four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. That's our grand finale event. You don't wanna miss it. This is where you can come talk to these presenters one-on-one. -on -one. They'll be up in the Ponderosa room in Maynard Conference Center. You can actually visit with them, shake their hand, ask them those questions that you want to ask. You can't beat it. All for, the, for one price. There's no additional charges. We do offer pony rides this year for the kidlets, and that will be uh, an extra price, but this is an opportunity for them to get out and ride a pony if they've never gotten that chance to. Kids 12 and under are absolutely free. They'll get their wristband at the door, so bring them on out. I hope you can make it out. Tickets are on sale now at equifestofks.com. Go to attend tickets and you'll find the link right there. BootDaddy.com proudly supports Equifest of Kansas, Kansas's premier all-breed horse fair and exposition presented by the Kansas Horse Council. Equifest of Kansas brings the nation's leading equine clinicians and entertainers to the Topeka Expo Center. Enjoy three full days of education, entertainment, and shopping, including the Jumper Classic, Breed Exhibition, Top Horse Versatility Competition, Ranch Rodeo, and more. It's an event for the whole family. For more information or to buy tickets, visit EquifestofKS.com. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day. 
and I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. My name is Grant Morgan. I'm with Pokey Feeders in Scott City, Kansas. We are currently a 75,000 head commercial feed yard. 95% um, of the cattle here would be owned by somebody else. Most of the cattle here would come from about 17 to 22, 23 different states. Um, and today, I'm here to talk to you about our water recycling system that we've been putting in on a four-year plan. We started in 2014. Basically, what we're trying to capture is all of our overflow water. Uh, most feed yards in our state predominantly are continuous flow water tanks, specifically in our area. So continuous flow water tank, what that means, when the temperature in the water gets to a certain temperature, basically freezing level, our tanks run a pickock valve that'll turn on and automatically allow water to continually flow in, not off of our float, how they're typically adjusted. So in the winter time, our water, um, when it gets to freezing level, our tanks will continually flow and will allow the water not to freeze. And so that water um, eventually ends up in our lagoons, which we capture that water and eventually pump it onto pivots, um, irrigation pivots and grow growing crops. Typically we grow cane silage, some triticale that we graze and chop in the fall and spring as well. Um, we currently have approximately about 600 pins and about 550 water tanks. Uh, most of our tanks are 75, 80 gallon water tanks and have a three inch standpipe in the center of those tanks that allow the water, if the tank is overflowing, to flow through that drain pipe and through our drain line that eventually makes it into our lagoon. Or when we're washing water tanks once a week, that standpipe can be pulled out and the tanks can be cleaned. So typically, you know, on a given day, we'll have several tank plugs, is what we refer to them as, that are missing or pulled out of the tank by cattle being curious animals. So what I'll show you right now is this is what we call our south section of the feed yard. And our south section is based on 20,000 head. It's the third system we put in. It was actually just completed in about two weeks ago. Um, so basically all of our feed alleys run north and south. So our water lines and our drain lines go north and south as well. Both of them are about two feet apart going through our pen. And so the water line goes into the tank, the drain line comes out of the tank. So all of our drain lines here drain all to the south side of this section of the yard and basically go into this ditch, which in turn funnels into this lagoon here. And so with our water recycling system, what we do is we draw or we lay an eight inch line surveyed out so all the water will naturally flow back to this point right here. It's an eight inch line that looks like a horseshoe that goes around this section of the yard and comes back to right here so it captures all of our drain water. I'll take you over to the system itself now. So where we're at right now is what we call our collection tank. Our collection tank is actually 17 feet deep and about eight foot by eight foot. And so basically there's two pumps inside of this tank itself. Um, there's a pump that'll send the, send the water into our recycling building where the water is actually recycled. And then there's a trash pump. So when we wanna clean this tank, we have valves that are set to, to put fresh water in the tank so we can clean it uh, when we see fit. But basically the water comes into here and as you can probably hear there's water running today because there's probably a tank running over. The water will come into this pit. There's a sensor in this pit that when the water gets to a certain level, um, our system will kick on. There's also a freeboard level in here if the power goes out and the trash pump doesn't kick on, uh, water will automatically go back in the, into the lagoon. So it goes in this pit, 
It'll fill up to a certain level, the system will kick on, and it'll start the recycling process. This segment brought to you by the Arab Shrine Circus, coming to the Kansas Expo Center February 15th through the 18th. For ticket information, visit ArabShrineCircus.com. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, it's Shrine Circus time! Enjoy a weekend of thrills, chills, and tons of fun at the Kansas Expo Center February 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. See lions and tigers, elephants, high-flying trapeze artists, and watch a man shot out of a cannon. And Johnny Rocket, everyone's favorite, is back! For more information, visit ArabShrineCircus.com and be sure to thank our corporate sponsor, Security Benefit. The Arab Shrine Circus, don't you dare miss it! Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We've talked about already of how we actually capture the water. Um, and at this point, I'll show you how we actually recycle it and put it back into our loop system for the cattle to drink. Um, when the, when the uh, water gets that certain level in the concrete tank, um, our pump will kick on out there and the water will be sent through one of these two media sand filters. There's silica sand that's up to about this level in the tank. The water will be forced through there, uh, goes through the sand media filter. At that point, it goes into what we call our clean water tank. When the clean water tank gets to a certain level, which is about to right here, there's a sensor on it as well. That will turn this pump on here. This pump will pull the water out of that tank. It'll run it through the UV light. And then at that point, uh, we're back into our loop system here. Um, our entire feed yard is, is tied in with, uh, all tied together, all 17 wells we utilize um, are tied in what we call a loop system. So this is actually set up on a pressure switch. So the pressure in the yard does not dictate when this water kicks on or off. Um, if we're having wells run and they're almost at their limit when the pressure is, is high enough, it'll shut those wells off. It'll still pull this water first and it'll shut wells off at that point if it needs to. Um, currently, like we discussed, this is our third unit. Um, we started in 2014, uh, put it on our west side of the yard. Last year, we finished one on our east side of the yard and now at the south section of the yard, which captures about 82% of the um, water or cattle pens that we have here. Um, next year in 2017 we plan on capturing the oldest part of the yard is our middle section. It's the toughest for us to capture um, but we're planning on tackling that next year. So we should have 100% of the yard um, recycled at that point. Um, some statistics. So in 2016 so far utilizing um, two units, our west section and east section which make up 55% that have ran so far to uh, August 30th is right at 8.6 million gallons we've recycled this year. Um, in 2015, um, we only had one full system on, which is 23% of the yard, and the other system on for about four months. Um, but in that year alone, we averaged 5,000 head of cattle more on feed. We had an addition in that year as well. And we recycled uh, 1.3 million gallons less water than what we used the year before, having five thousand more cattle on feed. So what that equates back to, our five-year average has been 10.3 gallons per head per day. Uh, we used in 2015, um, we used um, 9.6. So it equates back to 8% uh, less water used and, and only capturing really 23% of the yard recycled for the full year and 55% captured for um, four months. So this year, um, we're hoping to kind of round out um, you know, a little over 10 to 12 million this year is what our estimation is. Um, we're recycling our west and east units in 2016 just to shade over 37,000 gallons per day average. Um, so this year we're, we're hoping to capture, uh, you know, between, I say 12 million, around 12 million total for the year. Um, and next year with all three units going, and part of the year with the full yard, we're hoping to get the 25 million gallon range um, that we're going to recycle. 
Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we feature my renowned artwork, frontier military, and Native American artifacts. In the painting behind me is Scouting the Trail. Two scouts overlook the Smoky Hill River Valley, just north of the famous Monument Rocks, which are internationally renowned, as a column of 7th Cavalry parade north of the river. On this point, two scouts rode in a circle and there were 18 cartridges found up there and that meant that they usually were warning of impending danger and firing off their weapons. One of those weapons I feature in the gallery, a Spencer weapon, which we featured in the painting. Very unique and very honored to showcase this to you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. I'm Eric Aidy. I'm the agronomist in charge at the Kansas River Valley Experiment Field. We have a field outside of Topeka and also outside of Rossville. And uh, we do corn fungicide trials every year. Um, I work with Stu Duncan on that. And a lot of years, just because of the environment we have, uh, we don't have enough hours of leaf wetness, especially after tasseling. When we get into uh, July, we have low enough humidity, high enough temperatures, the, air, the leaves don't stay wet enough long enough to really promote disease moving up a plant. Most of the hy hybrids have some level of resistance to most of the diseases. However, last year we had an unusual set of circumstances. We had above average rainfall in August, and we had also very cooler temp much cooler temperatures. And uh, I think we had about 150 growing degree units less per the, for the month than on average. Well, that related to having more hours of leaf wetness. We'd also had uh, southern rust because we were warmer earlier, June and July. Southern rust moves up from the south. It had gotten here. There was a low level of southern rust at tasseling, but because of the cooler temperatures and the moisture, it really exploded. Also, those cooler temperatures slowed down the grain fill, so we had a much extended grain fill, which results in higher yield potential, but it was longer for this uh, fungus to actually eat up leaf tissue. So, a lot of years, we do not see a benefit to corn fungicide application. At best, maybe five or six bushel, which is about a break-even proposition. But this year we saw up to 20 and over 20 bushel an acre increase due to fungicides. Now, if we have the same kind of scenario, we would probably have the same kind of results. But that was not, last year was not a normal year. But it's just something to be aware of. Uh, what are the conditions? Do we have the diseases? Is the crop susceptible to this particular fungus? And are we having the conditions? Leaf wet, hours of leaf wetness is very critical for that. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron.
with American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide Radio and TV, the all-new Better Horses Network. What does a brighter, more sustainable future look like in our cities and towns, and how do we get there? When New York needed an alternative fuel source to reduce carbon emissions, the city found what it needed in biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. I'm Sarah, and this is my husband, Travis. We both grew up working on family ranches, me in Northern California and Travis in Kansas. We met in college, got married, and took corporate jobs in the beef industry. But soon we realized we missed the production side of the industry. So we made the daring move to start our own cattle business in Southeast Kansas, while also starting our family. Watch our story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Trust and leadership are critical to success at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center in Manhattan. Just ask Coach Bill Snyder. People of the Regenerative Center do care about others. I've been highly impressed with those people that have that vested interest and try to help people become better. The center really is a, a wonderful thing here in Manhattan, first of its kind. We're on the cutting edge of what lies ahead. Find out more about the trusted leader in stem cell therapy at kansasrmc.com. Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Be a student of the breed. That's commercial rancher Jim Moore's most valuable lesson. A man once told me the Angus business is as much about the people as it is about the cattle. Together, there's money to be made. The one thing that has really changed our operation more than anything was when we started feeding these cattle and we started getting these results back. And when we got our results back after the first pen of cattle that we had fed, got the individual data back on those, we learned more about our cow herd than we'd learned probably in the previous five to ten years. Data in hand, more turned to people, experts in the industry, to help him get better. I think one of the things that's been interesting about our operation and the thing, what the success that we've been able to have is uh, when Certified Angus Beef sorted the data for us our first time, it was really an eye-opening experience because even though we were looking at this data, we had no idea that there was such a difference between the top of the cow herd and the bottom of the cow herd. The rancher built on that advice and asked for more. About the time that Certified Angus Beef started sorting this data for us was also at the same time that we had started Gene Max testing these heifers. And so now what we're doing is we're eliminating this bottom end that's not as productive for us and we're bringing in some young heifers that have a tremendous amount of genetic potential in them. Aside from improved performance on the rail, Moore's cattle are more efficient with heavier carcasses and increased feed conversion. What we set out to do is to produce a product that we're proud of, to produce a product that the consumer is going to uh, enjoy when they eat it. And then the bottom line dollar is also that we're trying to create a premium for our cattle so that we can uh, be more profitable. Questions help get there and drive him forward. We've been blessed enough to have quite a bit of success with the percentage of cattle that we've had go grade C, A, B, and prime, but we're not satisfied with that. And we're going to keep striving and striving until someday, hopefully, we'll feed a pen of cattle that are 100% C, A, B, and prime. 
I'm Bob Cervera. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.